We're hanging out with senior sprinter Dion Lindor today, who is right in the heart of outdoor track and field schedule. Dion, thanks for joining us today for no the problem. student athlete profile. Uh, so you're from Trinidad and Tobago. Describe what it was like growing up there. Well, growing up in the Caribbean, it's always fun. You know, uh, the culture is totally different from here. The people are very supportive because they always want to see you do so well and whatever you try to go out and venture in. And sports is a big thing in the Caribbean and everybody wants to be a great athlete. But back in the days, I mainly focus on the sports like soccer and cricket and those type of sports because that's what actually thrived in, thrived in the Caribbean more. In my country, you know, track and field made it like third or fourth on the list. But, you know, I really enjoyed growing up in the Caribbean. There's a lot of, lots of stuff to do. As a kid, you always go outside. You always try to be adventurous. You always try to enjoy what there is outside for you. And I never really like being inside. <laughs> Who was your biggest influence growing up? I would say my sister is my biggest influence growing up. She always tried to be hard on me. And she set so many high standards for me. And... After a while, I tried to, you know, go out there and try to outdo her in whatever she did. So she had, she was good at a sport. I tried to find a sport so I could be just as great. She had good grades in high school, so I tried to go out there and try to better her at whatever she did. And she always pushed me to the limit and pushed me to be great at whatever I, I choose to venture in. What made you want to pursue track? Uh, my friends. Uh, growing up, we used to have this community of sports. And, you know, they bring all the kids around Easter and they make us run races, play cricket, play soccer. You know, just to have fun, just to live free time, you know, take our mind off of schoolwork. And we used to have these street, we used to have these races and we ran the couple events. And after a while, as the year progressed, because it started when I was about 12 years old. And when I was about 14, 15, that's when uh, the people in the community actually realized that you know, I actually had a talent, and they keep they kept at me, and they was like, you need to join a club, you need to join a club. They kept telling my mom, you know, put him in a club because he looked like he's going to be a great athlete. And there's this one guy, my neighbor, he always used to call me uh, the stallion because he, he liked the way I ran. And, you know, after a while, after people keep coming at you, you know, one day I decided, no, I just go out there and I ended up joining the team. So what was the decision like to leave home and come to the United States for college? Oh, well, dad was influenced by my high school, well, my track club coach. I used to have this little conflict between track and soccer because even though I wanted, even though you know, I was good at track, I still love soccer more than track. And I never really wanted to quit soccer. And he actually sat me down one day and he showed me the possibilities that there is with track compared to soccer. And even I, you know, sat there and looked at it and realized, you know, a bunch of the people that are really successful in soccer, you know, they, most of them come from South American countries. They come from Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, you barely see great athletes coming out of the Caribbean in soccer. And he told me one day, he realized that, you know, I was getting good at track. And he looked at me and he was like, I don't want you in Trinidad no more. You need to go to the U.S. and lose some races because every race I ran in Trinidad, I just kept winning. I kept winning. He was like, you won't be good unless you start losing again and you know you start learning what you have to work on. So because of him and his influence on me, I wasn't really worried that much about leaving the country. And I have left Trinidad a couple of times to run international track meets like in Italy and in Canada. So I know... Uh, I had my fair share of being away from my family, and I grew accustomed to it. Why did you decide on Texas A&M? <laughs> Texas A&M was a funny decision. Uh, I actually decided on Texas A&M because I was on YouTube watching track meets. And I saw a 4 by 4 I think it was 2010 NCAA championship. And I looked at the damage Texas A&M caused on a couple other teams. And from there, I looked at a couple more races at Tex uh, Texas A&M athletes, and I realized the school was great. And I talked to a couple people, and they got me in contact with Texas A&M. And what I really loved about the school is, within a couple of days, you know, they asked me if I wanted to come on a visit, and I was surprised. And within a week, 
a week and a half, I was at Texas A&M just a week and a half after watching the YouTube video, and I realized they had a real interest in me. They didn't know me that well, but when I came up, you know, coach sat down with me. I talked to the coaches, and we tried to understand what each, well, what we wanted from each other, and I talked to him before he even told me what he wanted from me. You know, I told him what I was looking for. If your track career comes to an end at some point, what would you like to do for a living? What would be your dream job? My dream job is to go back to Trinidad, at least, or I could be up here or go back to Trinidad mm -hmm. off and on. And I want to really develop track and field in Trinidad because, as you can see, you look back at past Olympics, we have, we have the talent, just we don't have the infrastructure for the talent. And you look at other countries like Jamaica, they really have a proper infrastructure for track and field. So their athletes will develop as easy as they have the talent. You could just go out there and they could just work on whatever they need. But in Trinidad, we don't really have that great focus on track and field. So I'm hoping with a little influence that I may get from outside sources and keep running internationally, my experience, experience I had from Texas A&M and meeting other people, hopefully I could put that all together and get a couple of people to join with me and go back to Trinidad and make some of track and field. Now, you've received several awards and honors and already had so many accomplishments. Is there one moment, though, that really stands out the most for you? At the end of the day, after I look back at all that I've accomplished, the greatest achievement will be crossing the line in London 2012. That may have been the greatest moment of my life. First of all, I wasn't even looking forward to the Olympic Games. I didn't even know that our chances were so great until we got there. And that day taught me to have a lot of confidence in myself and believe in myself. And the flashing lights, the cry, the screaming, just the, the shared moment at that point will always be remembered in my mind. I'll always remember that day. Yeah, an Olympic bronze medalist. What was, can you even describe in words what that feeling was when you crossed the line and you realized that y'all had placed third? Well, I crossed the line. I looked up at the screen and I saw, uh, I saw Bahamas, I saw USA, then I saw Trinidad and Tobago. And it didn't really sink in at that moment. You know, when I crossed the line, I was so exhausted that I, I passed out for a second. <laughs> And my team, when I opened my eyes, you know, my teammates were there. They were screaming in my face. And they was like, we did it. We did it. I was like, what you mean? And they was like, we did it. We, we got a medal. And I was so happy at that point. But the medal itself, you know, the significance of the medal did not really catch on to me until, like, a couple of days later. When you sit back and you reflect on the moment and you actually have it in your hand that you actually won an Olympic medal. You know, and a lot of people work so hard, you know, that's their greatest goal to achieve, a, you know, Olympic glory, at least be at the Olympics. And, you know, to go to the Olympics your first time and get a medal. You know, you ask yourself, now, where do I go from here? And the only way, the only thing you could say is, you know, you got to go back and better what you did before. You know, and years have passed and it's almost time for another Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. Just in, uh, like, maybe 400 and some days left. Till another Olympic champion. You're not counting down or anything. <laughs> you know, so now all I'm trying to do is, you know, at least end my college career with a bang mm -hmm. and go on and try to get another Olympic medal and try to make it better than the one before. All right, well, we're visiting with Dion Lindor. Let's get to know you a little bit off the track. When you do have some spare time, what do you like to do outside of school and practice? If I have spare time, according to what time, let's say it's the summer, mm -hmm. I'm not running no more track meets, I'll find myself on the intramural field playing soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I try, you know, go out there, you know, have fun with those people out there because, you know, people are so welcome in Texas A&M. You just go out there, you want to play, they'll just say, well, you know, come in, let's play. So I'll be out there on the field, let's say it's summer, I have nothing else to do. I'll go out there, have fun with them. You know, that's a good way to pass time, and, you know, I'm playing a sport that I love. Mm -hmm. What's something that you have had never eaten before, you came to the United States, and now you love? Growing up, I never really, I never really ate stuff like uh, bacon. <laughs> I've had 
steak a couple of times. Okay. I don't mind eating steak, but it has to be well done. Oh, okay. I the, first, <laughs> the first time I ever ate steak, uh, I was on a visit, and uh, I didn't know what to choose on the, on the menu. And Coach Francis told him to bring me a steak, and I told him I didn't want it. He's like, bring him a steak and bring him well done. And I sat there, and he watched me, and he told me, well, you got to eat it because, you know, it's going to be nice. And, and I don't mind having steak now every, <laughs> ever so often. Okay. Who's your favorite music artist? I love listening to Bob Marley because what he says, sometimes it, you can kind of relate to it in a mm. lot of instances. It could be if you have something bad going on in your life, you can relate to it. If it's something good going on in your life, you can relate to it. If you just want to have fun, you can relate to him at every level, every aspect. So I uh, kind of stick with Caribbean. Now, you've obviously traveled a lot. What's been your favorite place to visit? I want to go back to Italy. I've been to Italy when I was 17 years old for the World Youth Championship. I never I experienced it to a little extent. But the fact that we got we got lost one time, and that kind of deterred us from going back out, because we was, we didn't know what's gonna happen after that. So I really want to go back to Italy. I really I could just see myself going back there, and I really wanted to go to China. And this year the World Championship is in China, so what I have to do now is ensure that I'm in good shape and make the team, and I'll be there in China later this year. When you finally finish your career here at Texas A&M, what do you want your teammates and your coaches and, you know, even all the fans to remember you most by? When I came to Texas A&M, I always said I wanted to be the greatest quarter mile that ever been at Texas A&M. So everything I do, I try to relate it to me just going down in the books as being one of the best. I came here, I was lucky to win so many conference championships. You walk through that door, you see all these pictures of the other athletes, you see uh, the wall with all the fastest times. And I came in, I looked at the times, and I always said that uh, I want my name to be at the top. There's even a little note on the on the wall saying, if you don't see your name on the list, try to get it there. If your name is already on the list, try to go higher. And I try to keep my name on top. I just want to be known as the greatest quarter mile ever been at Texas A&M. Well, you've done a pretty good job so far. Dion, thank you so much for hanging out with us no today. No problem. Thank you.